In the year 1965, Nicolae Ceausescu assumed the powerful position of General Secretary of the Romanian Communist Party, marking the beginning of a long and oppressive rule over both the party and the country. For the next 24 years, Ceausescu would exert dictatorial authority, serving as the President of Romania while firmly holding the reins of the Communist Party. His tenure would be marred by notorious policies and widespread repression, eventually leading to his downfall during the Romanian Revolution of 1989. This revolution, part of the broader wave of anti-communist uprisings that swept across Eastern Europe that year, would bring an end to Ceausescu's regime, culminating in his execution. Prior to 1968, Romania had one of the most liberal abortion policies in all of Europe. Contraceptive methods were not widely available, leading to abortion becoming the primary method of family planning in the country. Following a period of post-war modernization, a high female workforce participation rate, and a relatively low standard of living, the number of births began to decline significantly from the 1950s onwards. Romanian leaders attributed this decline to the legalization of abortion in 1957. In response to the sharp decrease in the birth rate, the Communist Party decided that Romania's population should be increased from 20 million to 30 million inhabitants. This population target set the stage for a series of drastic measures, including the implementation of Decree 770. On the 1st of October 1966, Nicolae Ceausescu's communist government enacted Decree 770, a policy that would have profound and devastating consequences for the women and children of Romania. The decree, aimed at increasing the country's population, imposed strict restrictions on contraception and made abortion illegal, except in limited circumstances. This draconian measure resulted in immense suffering for countless women and their families as their reproductive choices and autonomy were stripped away. Under Decree 770, women of child-bearing age were subjected to monthly gynecological examinations as part of the enforcement measures. These examinations aimed to monitor pregnancies and prevent illegal abortions from taking place. The state imposed this intrusive system to ensure compliance with the decree and closely monitor reproductive health and compliance with the restrictive policies surrounding abortion and contraception. As part of the pronatalist policies under Decree 770, a monthly tax was imposed on individuals aged 25 years and older who did not have children, regardless of marital status. This tax served as a financial penalty for those who did not fulfill the expected societal role of bearing children, further reinforcing the government's emphasis on promoting fertility and discouraging childlessness. In Romania under Decree 770, doctors convicted of performing illegal abortions faced severe consequences. They could be sentenced to imprisonment for a period ranging from 10 to 20 years. Despite the strict penalties, illegal backyard abortions still took place, driven by the restrictive abortion laws and limited access to safe and legal procedures. These clandestine procedures were often performed under unsanitary conditions, leading to serious health risks for women. Complications such as sterility, infections, and, tragically, even death were unfortunate outcomes of these unsafe and unregulated practices. The persistence of illegal abortions and their grave consequences highlighted the desperate situation faced by women in need of reproductive health care during that time. The implementation of Decree 770 had a direct and significant impact on Romania's birth rate, leading to a substantial baby boom. Between 1966 and 1967, the number of births nearly doubled, demonstrating a dramatic increase. Additionally, the estimated total fertility rate TFR, experienced a substantial rise, increasing from 1.9 to 3.7. The natalist policies under Ceausescu's regime had a devastating impact on families and children. Thousands of babies were abandoned by their impoverished parents and placed in state-run institutions, commonly referred to as orphanages. However, the majority of these children were not true orphans but rather victims of circumstances, as their parents simply could not afford to provide for them. During this era in Romania, 
the scarcity of food led to a distressing reality of empty shop shelves and long queues for basic provisions. This dire situation had a direct impact on the health and nutrition of expectant mothers, resulting in a higher prevalence of malnourishment. As a consequence, many women gave birth to premature and underweight babies, facing additional challenges and health risks right from the start of their lives. Tragically, during that time, hospitals in Romania resorted to feeding these vulnerable babies intravenously using unscreened blood. The dire shortage of hypodermic needles meant that they were reused without proper sterilization, leading to devastating consequences. As a result, over 10,000 babies were infected with HIV, leading to an epidemic of AIDS that spread throughout the country, further compounding the already immense suffering experienced during those dark days. The children born during this period were commonly referred to as decrete, a term derived from the Romanian word decree itself. This term, decrete, was used to identify them as the offspring of the decree, highlighting their connection to the strict policies and regulations imposed by the government during that time. It served as a constant reminder of their status as children born under the influence of the decree and the societal implications that came with it. Following the execution of Nicolae Ceausescu and his wife Elena by firing squad on Christmas Day in 1989, journalists from around the world arrived in Romania to report on the aftermath and shed light on the atrocities within the state-run institutions. The shocking discoveries they made revealed a grim reality. Around 100,000 children had been abandoned in these facilities, enduring severe neglect, malnourishment, and unimaginable physical and sexual abuse. Ceausescu's regime may have crumbled, but the legacy of Decree 770 and its impact on the women and children of Romania remains etched in history. The suffering and resilience of those affected serve as a reminder of the importance of safeguarding reproductive rights, autonomy, and the well-being of all individuals. Thank you for joining us on this illuminating journey through time. Follow us to explore the depths of history and gain invaluable insights.